Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top Deck, the series where we take a look at some of the leading TCG deck lists on today I have with me. Jared, how are you doing, Jared? I'm good, Joe. Are you good? Yeah, very good, thank you. Nice. Um, so, today we are marking your return to the TCG. Yep. Yeah. And with the Shadol, um, not Shadol, sorry, just the Dogma in votes list, but you have the like tiny Shadol package. Shadol package, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. Really um, so, before we actually get into the nitty gritty of the list, why did you decide to play this uh, collection, this archetype group? Well, I was testing a lot of decks like Zodiac and um, Dinos Dinosaur and some other decks, but um, I felt like all the good combo decks, when they were going second, they weren't like able to break boards as well as Dogma Revolts can. Like, the, the Dogma cards just, in my opinion, the, the better than like Engage was because they allow you to like play through boards or like end on loads of disruptions and Ecclesia being like a plus one that searches an interruption or like a hand trap is really strong in my opinion. Yep. Um, and when I could end with like the first turn mech of the window with like traps and solemn judgment it was just really strong and every time I went first with this deck it was just like auto win. Mm -hmm. Even that, even if I got hand trapped, it was like really easy for me to like still play. Okay, that's cool. Um, uh, but overall, I just thought it was like the most consistent deck as well. Yeah. So that's why I chose it. Yeah, you have so many starters, right? So Ecclesia's yeah. a starter, Us is a starter, Meltdown's a starter, Medea is a starter. Yeah. You know, so like all the powerful cards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so let's look at the the card by card then. So. Yep. Um, a lot of this is like typical of what you'd see for Dogmatica Engine, you know, Triple Ecclesia, Triple Nadir. Um, yeah, most of it's quite standard. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like the only like standout cards really for me were um, main deckings like Solemn Judgment, Wonder Wand, yeah. and Imperial Order. They were like, I've not seen many invokes players like main deck those cards. Yeah, it's normally more hand traps, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but when I was testing the hand traps, they were just making me brick so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like having all the hand traps was, you know, you're just hoping that your opponent doesn't like know how to play around them, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Whereas yeah, judgment you don't have a choice. combo can like really, really understand how to play around most hand traps. So yeah. for me, it was just like when I was going first, drawing stuff like Gamma and that was nowhere near as good as having like actual cards yeah that's fair enough yeah i think i think that's definitely the the main thing that separates your list from others um the, the wonder wand was um honestly like the best card in the deck with three ttt and three desires you just <laughs> i can't explain how good it is but you just you dig in three decks like so fast and you just draw all the the broken cards after you've search with Ecclesia and Alistair and stuff, mm -hmm. you've depth in so much, so when you play Wonder Wand or Desires, you have a really high chance to draw the other one that you've not got. Yeah. And Wonder Wand not being once per turn uh, is really good. And yeah. also Wonder Wand can OTK going second with Ecclesia and Alistair. Oh really? Yeah, it's exact 8k. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit brutal. When I found that out, I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So is that why you decided to go with Wonder Wand instead of the Spellbook? Well, I tried Knowledge at first, and it's not cost to send with Knowledge, mm -hmm. but um, it's once per turn. So for me, having Wand not once per turn was like the defining factor in it being a main deck card. Yeah. Um, I would consider playing one Knowledge on top of these though, because honestly, the draw power in this kind of deck is insane when you have Alistair every turn. Yeah. Like, even just seeing a Solemn Judgment as a top deck, normally that's not good, but when you've got Alistair every turn, drawing a Solemn Judgment is like, just auto win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tune the Gates is always really strong. Yeah, for real, like, when you have Shadow Winder as well, like, they really can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds like, <laughs> sounds a bit like you're stacking on the floodgates more than anything else. Yeah, pretty much, you know. <laughs> so, uh, before we move on to side and extra, Imperial Order in the main yeah. deck. 
of Imperial Order was like just not. Uh, I would not take it up to be honest. Mm -hmm. You didn't when mind you can just... like because I mean almost half your deck is spells. That that was yeah. never a problem. Um, to be honest, like whenever I had order face up, I normally had a mechaba or like a window out, so I didn't really find it conflicted that much because. Mm -hmm. Say I already drew spells, like, after I had all the face up, I can just discard them with Mechaber, or, like... Yeah. Um, I don't know, I, I guess, like... Order was just a powerful card on top of, you know, all the other cards that I have in the deck, like Judgment mm -hmm. and Mechaber. When you draw it in combination with those, it's just, like, most decks can't out your board. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair enough. Uh, are there any changes you'd make to the main deck, apart from you mentioned the, the Knowledge? Maybe. Yeah, uh, I consider Secret Village actually because um, when I'm ending with Shadow Window so much, if I had a village face up, that would just like mean they can't use Dark Ruler no more. Yeah. Or like, or say I have village face up and I drew a Solemn Judgment. Yeah. I can just judgment any spellcaster that they would play. Yeah. And then they, they've just lost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I consider it maybe over order because it's a searchable card with terraforming. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, like the main deck was just very solid. Like, Maybe some of the hand traps would change, you know, with Zeus and not. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, let's move on to the extra deck then. Yeah. Um, so the I think... The extra deck was really, really, like... Yeah? Pretty... I think it's pretty standard, but um, everything in there was very good. I've used everything in the extra deck. Okay. So I wouldn't change anything in there. And was there any time when you wanted more or something? Like, did you ever want another uh, a Titanic Ladder or anything? Yeah, I did actually need a second Dash Dragon. Um, it wasn't like so much I needed it, but it's for when um, you're forced to use Punishment. Like, you, you kind of need a second one just to keep the ball rolling and like, in mirror match and stuff, it helps you grind a bit more. Yeah. But I was able to use Omega on it, so it was kind of like, Play a second Ash Dragon over something else is not worth playing because like everything else is just too good. And Omega like is the second copy of everything. Else. Yeah, fair enough. And the um, Cyber Dragon Nova to summon out your Macabre when your opponent Maximus is you. Yeah. Did that come up? Uh, I didn't play a mirror match, so it didn't. Mm -hmm. But um, just having it in there meant that my mirror match was free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice to just get that extra edge. Yeah, I mean, in, in decks that are not invoked, I would not use Nova against, this, you know, Maximus because um, I feel like a good invoke player will, you know, if they've got triple tactic talents and they're Maximus here, then if you send anything where they can make talents live, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, exactly. like, what, what I did, uh, somebody was using Nova against me when I Maximus them, but I had, you know, talents in hand, so... You know, it's just like, I get more pluses because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're playing something like that. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um, so, would you change anything from the extra then? No, like... extra, that was solid. Uh, yeah. I, I missed a Nightmare Phoenix, to be honest. Like, that was probably something I would try and fit in. Mm -hmm. Maybe over and over because I don't think Invokes is heavily played that much in TCG. Yeah. Yeah, not as much as OCG. I mean, we do see it every now and again, right? Yeah, it's still there, but I feel like it's mostly like the better players just play the combo decks and they will try and go to this kind of deck because this deck's pretty fair mm -hmm. and you, you have to play it really like with no misplays because you get punished a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Okay. Uh, side deck then. Side Sorry. deck was just mainly blowout cards. Yeah. Yeah. This was um, pre Phantom Rage, right? Yeah, pre Phantom Rage, so no Zeus, no um, Virtual World. Mm -hmm. And post, so I'm just seeing this Pancreas Ops, post uh, Phantom Rage, would you add in the Alphas, do you think? Hmm. Just like honest, four copies I, of Pank. The Zoo King's really strong, um, but I feel like the side deck was really, really cramped. Um, I mean, if, if I main Nibiru going forward, then I would probably side something like Zuking. Okay. It, it helps going second a lot. I, I think Pancratops is actually like a good main deck card right now, because in CCG, a lot of people main Gamma. 
So mm -hmm. when you go first, you can just like spec punk when they use Gomma. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, quite um, cool. Yeah, punk was in my main deck for quite a while for that reason. But, um, no, a side I was happy with, to be honest. Like, I sided in everything against most decks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lightning Storm was really, really strong. Yeah, yeah. Because that's an interesting one. Because we've seen Lightning Storm take a like a pretty big dip recently in terms of price. Yeah. But um, I mean, if you're saying it's still got a lot of value, then maybe there's something the market hasn't seen yet. Well, honestly, whenever I drew it, um, and I could resolve it, it just won me the game. Like, it made any board going second just so much easier to deal with. Yeah. Uh, when I've got like all the powerful draw spells as well, like blowout cards like Lightning Storm and Buster and cards like that are just much more impactful in my deck because I, I see them a lot more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You've got so much draw power in here. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, so any changes post Phantom Rage to the side? You mentioned you might fit the Nibiru in somewhere. What would you take yeah. out? Yeah. Uh... Well, I want to try and main Nibiru somehow because um, I just feel like you don't really have a time in this deck where you're scared to Nibiru yourself, like mm -hmm. going second as well, like after you've made your board. Like you're okay with Nibiru in yourself because you've got Mecha Buff, you know, yeah. Alistair every turn. So, yeah. Yeah, like I don't think Imperm's that good going forward. Like it's, it's only good against VFP. But I feel, I feel like Imperm's slowly becoming worse, in my opinion. Okay. Fair enough. And um, yeah, yeah. Side deck though, like I, w I don't really like siding stuff like Alpha because mm -hmm. for one card it just doesn't do enough. Mm. You know, like with Nibiru and Gamma, they can just win you the game. Yeah. But with like Zuki and Alpha, it's not a card that just has enough value by itself. Okay, if it was actually like uh, Panker shots and it destroyed. Yeah, stuff. if I could use free punk, I'd use free punk. Yeah, <laughs> like, that card is just too good. <laughs> Fair enough. And when you are siding in all these powerful cards like Nibiru, yeah. Gamma, etc., what kind of stuff are you taking out? Is it just your hand traps, or is there something so, else? So, going second, I, I usually side out Wonder Wand and Judgment, or the, sometimes a Punishment. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I side out Maximus going second as well, um, if they're playing Nova, you know, it's, it's kind of good to side out. Yeah. Um, I never sided out Shizm going second, it was just... It was just amazing when um, when I could break their board and then set up Winder after. Like it just <laughs> yeah, they, they can't really deal with it because they don't side outs for Winder when they go uh, first yeah. as well. But yeah, it was mainly siding out the, the draw spells, um, like what one judgments and then like a talent. Okay. I like to keep in one or two of them because it still has a lot of value. Yeah, if you if you keep them in, you get to see your side deck cards more, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because okay. um. Go, going second, they're usually going to have a way to make talents live for me anyway, so... Yeah. It's good. So when you're going second, are you normally yeah. bringing in, like, the Nibiris and the Gammas, so you've got, what, um, 12 hand traps, is it, going second? Yeah, 12 going second. I, I felt like any additional hand traps were just... There was already cards that did their job well enough, like, Veilover was just not as good as Gamma. Mm -hmm. um, I think Winter Cherries is probably good going forward. You know, um, with the new set. Yeah. Like Winter Cherries against VFD is pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even against Zeus sometimes. You know. Mm -hmm. And also but... Winter Cherries would be nice for my mirror match as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when they play in vacation, just Cherries the Mecha Burn. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna play Cherries, you're gonna have to fit all the stuff into your extra deck, though. I imagine it's oh, gonna yeah, be pretty difficult. I'll probably just have to side Cherries. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Cool. Um, with this deck then, yeah. in the pre-Phantom Rage format, what was the hardest matchup that you would normally face? Uh, the hardest matchup was only Dragon Link, and only if it won the dice roll. Okay. Um, but there was times like when I did go second against Dragon and I opened Dash and Infirm, mm -hmm. and like if I timed the hand traps right, you know, I could still break their boards and win. Yeah. But um, I didn't want additional hand traps because uh, I felt like I'm just relying on getting lucky by drawing them hand traps at the right time and hoping that they can't play around them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the tough ones. 
Post mm. um, post Phantom Rage doesn't change. It's still Dragon Link. That's the big problem. If it's even a big problem, to be honest, like it, it was only a problem because of the end board being Herald mostly. Yeah. Like, the Herald is just very hard to play around a lot of the time. Okay. Um, but yeah, Dragon Link. If I win the dice roll, it's you know really easy to beat it, and. If I was playing any other deck, even Dragon Link against Dragon Link is 50-50, so I'd rather just play a deck that beats every other deck mm -hmm. and just can 50-50 Dragon anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. You're not going to face too many of them at the moment, right? People yeah, exactly. And so like, this deck doesn't brick as much as Dragon does anyway. Yeah. Because Dragon plays so many hand drops, it, it can brick. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. Cool. I, I do think like Dragon is just the best deck to be honest, but yeah. I didn't feel like it was the best deck for the kind of event that I was playing because like everyone's prepared for Dragon and everyone would expect Dragon to win that kind of event. Yeah. So tell us a bit more about the event. Yeah. Um, overall, it was like you know really good. It was my first event, all format. I didn't like play any Yu-Gi-Oh until two days before the event. <laughs> And it was only on DB, so I had to learn everything like all over again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this deck just stands out to me more than the other decks. Like, if you try it out yourself, you'll just see how much advantage it gets. And like, if a deck's hand trapped here, they've got four cards, and then when you've got all these draw spells and like all these inherent plus ones, you just end up with like plus five. Yeah. For no reason, and no deck can compete with that, in my opinion. Having so much advantage first turn, you just <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like better than playing things. combo because you can react to things mm -hmm. and you don't have a bad matchup. Like if they missed it, Miami, I, I can use Wonder Wand to like get rid of mine. <laughs> yeah. So you know, overall, like the engine in the deck was just perfect. You know. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and uh, are you thinking of continuing playing? Um like an invoked dogma list in the future or yeah i do really like the deck and yeah. you know i'm hoping to play it going forward um it's it's probably just a case of like changing the cards that you know uh meta call cards mm -hmm. i feel like it's the kind of deck like sky strike was back then where it's like it's got a very good engine and you can fit quite a lot of tech cards in because like I don't need to play Wonder Wand, I don't need to play Judgment, so like there's a lot of room for those like other tech cards to fit in the main deck. Yeah, and you can always just tweak it for whatever event you're facing. Yeah, for sure. I and I feel like Invoked has a really, really ridiculous going second. Because you start with six cards and then you've got all those plus ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it it just felt like the best deck when I was playing it though, mm -hmm. compared to the other decks, you know. It okay. felt like what a tier one deck should be. Yeah, and you you never really felt that with um, playing any of the other like top tier decks. No, the, the other decks they were just like they either committed too much into the combo where like they, they have no follow ups if they get stopped, or it was like they can't do as much as invoked can, and like they, they lose against the rest of the meta. Yeah. Where like invoked, there's no bad matchup for it really. Like it, it doesn't struggle against any deck. I, I never felt like I had a really hard time against anything apart from Dragon anyway. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Cool. Um, are there any shout outs you want to make? Yeah, shout out my boy Sam. Um, he top 8 the event as well. And he's the reason I played it because <laughs> he wanted me to get back into Yu Gi Oh! So we were just fairied for a bit. And then, yeah, yeah. I played it. And he lost in top eight against Dragon. Yeah. He was playing some like 60 card uh, Red Eyes fusion deck. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Is that His the deck was like, pile? Yeah, it was pile with like just so many good cards. Yeah. This deck was like quite strong. I think he should have won the event to be honest because his deck had so many blowout cards. Yeah, we've seen that. We've seen the rise of uh, decks like that with like generator engines and new. Yeah, it was stuff. using generators and everything in that. So. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. uh, it's definitely one to to look out for down the line. Yeah, I, I agree because those kind of decks, you, you can't prepare for like all of their different engines. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And like, it, it's so difficult to play around those kind of decks because there's so many ways you can build them. Like, there's so many good cards you can put into that 60 card deck. It just makes playing around things like so much harder. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, thanks very much for coming on and for sharing your yeah, insights. Yeah. It's all good. Um, you guys watching, you can grab the full deck list from the description. There's a DB download link there if you want to pick it up and give it a go. And that's going to be everything for me. Anything more from you, Jared? Uh, I just want to say, like, Solemn Judgment, very good right now. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just Solemn Judgment's good. Cool. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll see you guys in the future. Yeah, see you in the future, bro.